I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Police out of the Get down! You show up with beer, you show up with condoms. You're naked, there's a 14-year-old girl, you're chasing a cat around, you've got Cool Whip. He's in the kitchen coming towards the living room. The issue here is not gear straight. The issue here is adult child. The one that bothered me the most was the guy that showed up with rope and duct tape. You are every parent's worst nightmare. Suspected predators caught on tape. And one is caught going way too far. Tonight on To Catch a Predator. They're online and on the prowl, grown men targeting children on the internet. Good evening and welcome to Dateline. I'm Stone Phillips. And I'm Ann Curry. This month, millions of people have been watching our investigations into computer sex predators, among them some of the suspected predators themselves. And what's most surprising, even knowing that they may be walking into a sting, is not enough to keep some of them away. Tonight, we're back in Florida, where we started our investigation last week. And now there are new suspects and new dangers. Again, we want to remind you that some of what you will see is explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. You seem like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do. So you're an expert in this area. No, no, I'm just saying you, you come off as law enforcement. Really? You know how you come off? How's that? Somebody who's very nervous. Somebody who came over here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl. 14-year-old? Like all our previous investigations, the potential predators here in Fort Myers, Florida, are keeping us busy. Is this some kind of setup or something? While some are surprisingly candid... They arrested me for possessing child pornography because I had nude pictures of her on my computer. They ended up dropping the charges. Others tell us stories we've heard before. Just come over to say hi. That was it. And one man does something so brazen, you have to see it to believe it. You want to explain yourself? But they all have something in common. Every one of them chatted online about having sex with a person posing as a young teen, made a date to meet, and then showed up at our undercover house. A number of these individuals traveled quite a ways. Hilton Daniels is the chief of police in Fort Myers. I believe the furthest one drove 223 miles to Fort Myers to have sex with a child. Chief Daniel says it's frightening to think what would have happened if there really had been a child home alone. Anything could have happened in that house. The person would have cleaned up and drove away. And as law enforcement agencies, we would never have known who that person was. Made the turn. But fortunately, there are no real children in the house. Instead, there are decoys, members of an online watchdog group called Perverted Justice. Dateline hired them as consultants to do what they normally do, set up profiles of 12 to 15-year-olds, and in this case, go into Florida chat rooms and wait to be contacted by a grown-up. Once an adult starts messaging, a decoy will often pretend to be home alone and willing to have sex. He has a case of perhaps Bud Light or something. Over the course of three days, men come knocking on our door, and our 13 hidden cameras record their every move. From the minute they turn onto our street until they walk into our living room, cameras are rolling, but the potential predators have no idea. There he goes. He heard you. He's coming. He's coming fast. This man shows up to a house he's never been to before to keep a date with a girl he's never met. He walks into the backyard and knocks on the wrong door. No one answers, so he makes a call. No one answers the phone either. Finally, he hears our decoy and heads inside. Hey, I just had to change my shirt real quick, but just come in and watch some TV. I'll be right there. Where you at? I'm just going to change my shirt real quick. Although perverted justice members are actually the decoys who conduct the chats online, we hired this actress to pretend to be the girl alone in our house. She looks the part of a minor, but she's really 19. Sit down on the chair and eat some cookies. I just have to change real quick. The man who's come into our house is 23-year-old Raul Antonio Brenes, screen name Antonio69929, an assembly worker. He met a girl posing as a 14-year-old online and asks her if she's ever had anal sex. She says no, and then he types, would you ever do it? He also asks her, how many rounds can you last? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would you be able to have sex and take a break until you get tired, or could it be an all-night thing? I guess we'll see. <laughs> I just want to make sure you can handle me. 
To keep his date, he actually got on a bus and rode across the state of Florida. But instead of finding a minor alone, he meets me. Sure. Why don't you have a seat right over there, please? Online, he told the girl he'd bring alcohol and spend the night. And look, he's brought beer and an overnight bag. How was your bus ride? Good. How long were you on the bus? Wow, sir. How many hours about? About four. And what else did Antonio 69929 bring with him? Did you bring condoms with you? It's in my bag. I always bring them with me. You always bring condoms? Yes, sir. You show up with beer, you show up with condoms after a sexually charged online conversation at a home where you believe a 14-year-old girl is alone for the weekend. You say, are you sure you can handle me? You ask her if she's cool about having sex with you. I'm guilty of whatever is there, sir. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm guilty of whatever is there. And what could he be guilty of in the state of Florida? Using the internet to attempt to solicit a minor for sex, a felony. Not appropriate at all, sir. Why did you do it? Just, just me being dumb. What do you think should happen to you, Antonio? Well, he won't be getting the death penalty, but he'll find out shortly he does have a date before a judge. I'm uh, printing out right now everything. Perverted Justice has been sending the sexually explicit online chat logs between its decoys and the potential predators to the Fort Myers Police Department and state prosecutors. They're staked out in the guest house behind our house. In the case of Antonio 69929, there's enough evidence for an arrest. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet children on the Internet. So after I tell him he's going to be on Dateline... So you're free to leave. Get on the ground! Get down! Get down. He gets arrested. And taken away in an unmarked police car. Then he's brought to this transfer station where he's searched. You have any ID on you? Yeah, they have my wallet. Sir. And he's taken to jail. Watch your head when you get in. The next morning, he appears before a judge, and bail is set. There is probable cause as to all charges. There'll be a $40,000 bond composite. His story is only one in a long line of potential predators who come knocking on our door. 7.30's here. Here he's coming in. And as you'll see, some seem prepared to do things that police find quite disturbing. The one that bothered me the most was the guy that showed up with rope and duct tape in his vehicle. When we return, you'll meet that man. What was he really planning? You talk about using the rope in various sex acts with this 15-year-old girl. And later, no shirt, no pants, and nowhere to hide from our hidden cameras. Marvin, you're naked. To Catch a Predator continues in a moment. He went down to the triangle at Avocado and made a right, so he's either circling back down a scale and coming up Riverside. On the first day alone, 10 men show up at our undercover house in Fort Myers, Florida, where supposedly a young teen is home by herself and ready to have sex. Here he comes, here he comes. Copy that. Wave him up. Get him in. This is Brian Gosselin, screen name Bay Jones. Hey, come on in. The door's open. He's here to meet a girl who said online she was 15. He lied to her about his age, claiming to be 24. He's really 32. And based on what he had to say online, want to blank my brains out, it's not hard to guess why he's here. I got some wine coolers. Wine coolers are just fine. Hey, you weren't kidding when you said a big house. I know. The house is beautiful. I love my house. Yeah. Are you the only child? Yeah. Oh, did you bring, did you bring protection? Yeah. Perfect. The only bad news about that is you're probably not going to need that type of protection tonight. See, I knew this was going to be a setup. You did? Yeah. How did you know that? Just because of the way she was talking online. Brian, what's your last name? I don't have a last name. You don't have a last name. And that's about all he's willing to say. I just leave. I guess no, I'm no, no. I'm not finished I'm not asking questions here. yet, sir. I'm not wanted here. Seven thirty's here. But most men who show up at our house are willing to talk. He is on the steps, opening the door. Like this man, thirty-year-old Kenneth Fortin. Watch it, he's coming fast. He's in the kitchen. Call out. Hey, I'm in here. 
He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a 15-year-old. He describes detailed plans for their sexual rendezvous. He says he likes to start with oral sex. After that, he asks her what position she'd like to try first. And he also asks if he can do more. Can I tie you up? You got, like, ropes and stuff? Yeah, I work construction, so I have all kinds of stuff. But if you like rope, I'll bring rope. And where? So did he actually bring rope? Hey, I'm about to put on my bra and panties. Come on in. Keep going. He's coming fast. Rob, go ahead. Chris has him. How you doing? All right. How are you? you have a seat over in that chair, please? He says he's here to meet a girl, but he can't remember her name. And he's a little vague about her age. Rather young? Rather young. As in? 15 or 16. 15. And how old are you? 30. And it's okay for a 30-year-old man to come to a home where a 15-year-old girl is alone. Why? No, it's not okay. During their online chat, they talked about condoms. He also said he'd bring marijuana. Did you bring condoms with you? No. Not in your car? No. Did you bring marijuana? No. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. But is he telling the truth? We'll find out later when police oh, search his car. Question here too. But now he does admit to bringing one thing. Did you bring rope with you tonight? I have rope in my car. You for, have rope in your car? Yes, for my job. You talk about using the rope in various sex acts with this 15-year-old girl. What would have happened if a 15-year-old girl was here and I wasn't? Same thing that's happening now, just talking. Do you see why that's very difficult for me to believe, based on this chat? Yes, I do. That's the guy's honest truth, though. But I why should I believe that? that? Because I have a six-year-old daughter that I'm trying to see. You have a six-year-old daughter. How would you feel if a stranger came I'd into your it. home? I'd hate it. <laughs> I'd hate it. So why then is it okay for you to come into this home where you thought a girl was alone? Bad judgment. There seems to be a lot of bad judgment in the air. So he's making the turn. He's ner nervous. He's in front of this. Call out. Call out. Hey, come on in. He heard. Put the cell phone on. Awesome. Back away. He's opening the door. He's in the laundry room. Danny. Here comes 22-year-old Elias Balon, screen named Daytona 02, a small business owner. He's been chatting online with a girl posing as a 14-year-old named Lainey. She asks him if he'll bring her vodka and let her drive his car. He says, whatever you want, sweetie. And when Lainey tells him her bedroom is hot, he types, you hot, mommy? Let's make love. He drove two and a half hours to get here. It's just before one o'clock in the morning. TV for a little bit. I'll be right out. Where are you? Oh, I'm just changing my shirt real quick because I got chocolate on it. Just take a seat. I'll be right there. I made you some cookies. Did you bring me my drinks? Can you come out? Yeah, I'll be right there. I just got to change. Why don't you do me a favor and come on in. Will you bring your stuff in? It looks as if Daytona 02 has come bearing gifts. What have we got here? A rose. A rose. What about condoms? Did you bring condoms? Yes, sir. You did. Why don't you put those on the table? No, I said I carried them. In. So you brought a rose, alcohol, and some cotton. What does that add up to? I know, sir. Then he reveals something we didn't know. I knew if something would happen like this, I would get in trouble because I'm married. You're married? <laughs> yes, sir. That's not what you said in the chat. No, no, I didn't say that. I didn't yeah. say that. No, but I'm married. <laughs> you are married? <laughs> yes, sir. But I really love her. The thing is that they think that we don't get along sometimes. Now, what do you think she would say if she knew that you were coming here to have sex with a 14-year-old girl? She would kill me. <sighs> I don't want to think about it. She would kill me. Yes, sir. I would get a divorce. Uh, her dad has 10 brothers. 10 brothers? They would kill me. They'll all be looking for you. Oof. Daytona O2 says he knew he was taking a big risk and worried this might be a setup. You say this might be a trap. I've seen that on TV. Yeah. What did you see on TV exactly? Uh, that, well, in the news actually, because the people get like uh, arrested because of chatting like with underage girls. Right. So you saw it on Dateline NBC. Yeah, yeah, news. Just news. Yeah. I didn't. Oh my God! I didn't think I was gonna have that. He still doesn't appear to know he's landed in the middle of a Dateline investigation, but he'll find out a little later. Okay, he's in the driveway. Alphabet, coming in. Everybody. This is him. It's Lee Greer. It's Lee Greer. It's Lee Greer, 74, our 1 o'clock. You know who it is? 
now, here comes another married man. He's 31-year-old Lee Greer, screen name Lee Greer 74. He's away from home on business, and he's been chatting online with a 13-year-old. At least that's what the decoy told him. He sends her a picture of his penis and then types, you will get to see the real thing, you know, in person. He's on the back door, his porch opening the door. He's supposed to be bringing lunch and booze. Hey, come on! Often, perverted justice decoys will ask a man to bring something specific, like food or alcohol. Ask if you brought them lunch and booze. Did you bring the food? Yeah. Okay, great. Law enforcement says it helps show intent because a potential predator is bringing items that he talked about online in the same conversation he's talking about sex. What did you bring? Double cheeseburgers with no pickles. Awesome. I made chocolate chip cookies too, but I actually just got some of my shirt, so I'm just going to change my shirt real quick. Alright, I got some fries, but the fries might be cold. It took me a little while to find this place. You can just take a seat. I'll be right there. Okay. So no uh, cookies for you? What's going on? Not much. Who are you? Who are you? Um, Lee. And Lee, what are you doing here? Uh, come to visit a friend off the net, I thought. At first, he tells me the friend he came to see was 18 or older, but then changes his story. So why don't you start over again and tell me how old did she say she was in the conversation? 13. How old are you? <laughs> Too old. 31. 31. Yes, sir. And you thought it was okay for a 31-year-old man to come to a home no, where sir. a 13-year-old girl was alone because why exactly? I didn't. Then why did you do it? Stupidity. Stupidity. Honestly. I was... God. Pure stupidity. You sent her that picture. Yes. Right. And I told her they were dirty pictures and she wanted to see them, so I showed them. Was, so because a 13-year-old girl says it's okay, it's okay for you to do no, it? No, it's not, sir. No, sir. Are you married? Yes, sir. How's this going to go over at home? Not good. <laughs> I had really, really, really like for it not to go home. Really, I'm, sir. What do you think should happen to you, Leah? Honestly, I'd like to be able to just go back to work. And just go back to work. Just walk, get up and I'm, grab I'm a not, cookie I'm and not walk saying on that, I'm not saying what, I, what I've done is right because I know it's wrong. I'm admitting to you that it is wrong. So we're all square, even Stephen, and you should no, just get no, up and walk out no, of here. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Honestly. Well, there's a few things that you need to know. As we told you before, he won't get off that easy. Everything that you've done since you pulled up here has been recorded on camera. Oh, Lord. Neither will the next potential predators you're about to meet. Where are you? Coming up, he's the father of two teenage children. But that didn't stop him from making a date with our decoy, posing as another teen. What was your plan here? with this 14-year-old boy. I mean, we talked about sex and stuff like that. and then Sure did. When to catch a predator continues. During our undercover investigation here in Fort Myers, Florida, there's been a steady stream of potential predators arriving to keep their dates with someone who told them they were a young teen. There we go, now we're back. Ten men the first day and 11 men on the second day. And there's still one more day to go. Approaching the back door, he's uh, coming through. Some come looking not for girls, but for boys. Meet 23-year-old Ryan McIntosh, screen name QX4Boy19. He owns a high-end dog boutique. He's here to meet a boy who told him online he was 14. The decoy says, you won't tell anyone I'm gay, will you? And QX4Boy19 replies, if you don't tell anybody, you blanked my blank. Dell from what? Perverted Justice, playing the male decoy, invites him in and scoots behind the door before he sees her. Well, watch to hear something. I'll be right back out, all right? All right. Why don't you uh, make yourself at home here? Have a seat. What's going on? Not much, told you. Like many other men caught in our investigations, QX for Boy 19 insists he didn't come here for sex with a young teen. I was just going to hang out, and I felt like I'd be more big brother more than anything. I do Big know. brother. Yeah, so you're coming over to be a mentor. In a way, yes. 
And I'm sure you've heard that 20 billion times. 20 billion and one, counting to nine. I had no intention of having sex with him tonight. What were you going to do? Just hang out. But his chat log doesn't make it sound like he was just here to hang out. You talk about penis size, whether he's got pubic hair. Mm -hmm. You say you're horny. You say you're masturbating while you're talking to him. You talk about hooking up, and you say, if you don't tell anybody, you my I said that? You, and then you say, I don't want to go to jail. Do you recall that conversation? I'm sorry I didn't say that. I mean, the issue here is not gay or straight. No. The issue here is adult child. In the mentoring conversation that you're saying to me that you were going to have tonight with a 14-year-old, that's not what well, you I were didn't saying. Well, why did you have conversation so I just I was going to just come out and hang out and, and see what he's like. QX for boy 19 sits and talks to me for more than 10 minutes. Then amazingly, when I start to tell him who I am, well, I got to tell you, he I'm already knows. I know. And we're, you know. Have you seen the previous stories? You have. And as you'll hear later, the possibility of walking into a Dateline investigation wasn't enough to stop him. Here comes another man who's seen our previous broadcast. He's in the laundry room. He's in the kitchen coming towards the living room. His name is Dallas Lee. He's been chatting online in an AOL gay chat room with a boy posing as a 14-year-old. It takes him less than seven minutes to ask the boy if he wants oral sex. The decoy says, okay, cool. And a few hours later, he's walking into our living room. Yeah. I'm finishing it right. Hang out the table for a second, okay? Yeah. So you're pumped too, huh? Yeah. So what were you so uh, pumped for? No, not too much. Do you have a seat right on the uh, stool there? What you doing here? He invited me over. Who is he? Uh, Tony. Tony. Yeah. And how old is Tony? Mm, 14. What was your plan here with this 14-year-old boy? I mean, we talked about sex and stuff like that. And then you sure we, did. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I got two kids of my own. We can hang out and stuff. And how old are your kids? My son is 19 and my daughter is 15. So your daughter is one year older than the boy you were coming mm -hmm. to visit tonight? Mm hmm Now, how would you feel if your daughter, at the age of 15, was home alone and a man came to visit her? Honestly, terrible. Yeah. You know. And so why is it okay for you... It's not. You're absolutely right. Honestly, it's not. You know, but I, I was even... Not even set the sex aside. He says he knows it looks bad, but he really wanted to be a father figure to the boy who told him he didn't have a dad. But if that's so, why did he tell the boy he was 20 years old when he's really 40? Why, if you're trying to be lie? a father figure to this kid, as you have suggested to me you were right. trying to do, why would you tell him you were 20 and much closer to his age? Right. That's, that's a mistake. as though somebody would do that exactly. if, in fact, and they see, wanted that's... the target exactly. to think they were younger that. and be comfortable to have sex. I understand. I understand what you're right? coming from. He also understands something else. As you sit here today, based on this chat, That's based upon up. your arrival here, mm -hmm. you are every parent's worst nightmare. Exactly. I understand what you're saying. You're right. I guarantee it's never going to happen again. He's coming in, walking. And there's still another man who comes he's to the house forward. claiming he's really here he to help. Six. Bottom step in the laundry room. Where are you? I'm right here. I got things to change. I'll be right there. He's 61-year-old Thomas Campbell, J1H3120. He's been chatting online with a decoy posing as a 14-year-old. He graphically describes how he likes to give oral sex to young men. The decoy asks, is that like your favorite to do? And J1H3120 says, yep. And from what most say, it's the best they've had. No, where are you at? I'm right here. I just got a oh. change. <laughs> Sorry, man. I didn't mean to confuse you. Right. Moving pretty quick there. Why don't you have a seat right over there? Okay. At the stool. Where were you headed there? Huh? Where were you headed just Just to talk with him. Just talk with who? Tony. Online, he lists his age as being in his 40s. At first, he tells me he's only 49. Later, we learn the truth. I'm 61. You're 61. So you're not in your 40s? Like no. Just... The man starts to have a bit of an asthma attack. Just relax. He uses his inhaler and says he's fine. Then he tells me he had a tough time growing up gay and wanted to help the young boy he expected to be here. To help him see that 
it's not really the shameful situation that it was when, when I was younger. So you were here to mentor this boy? If I could, yeah. If I could, you know, I, I don't mind helping. And did that mentoring process include having sex with him? Oh, no. But that's not how the conversation went on the internet, is it? I don't think so. I don't know. You say, I love to a young man, deep and him. Okay. Do you recall that? I, I believe so. This was. Well, I have the whole transcript here. A few so. days ago. Yeah. Yep, and from what most say, it's the best they've had. The real compliment is when they keep coming back for more. You'd absolutely love it. I'm in my 40s, but guarantee that I'm not some old guy wanting to perv a young boy. Well, the reality is, is that you are older. Mm -hmm. And what's going on here seems pretty pervy, doesn't it? It does. A total of 24 men show up at the house, <laughs> are arrested, and thrown in jail. But first, they'll find out they're going to be on national television. We'd like to hear it if not. Coming up, excuse after excuse. Never have I met anyone underage. I will swear on my mother's grave. And arrest after arrest. Please, this is a mistake. Then later, our undercover cameras capture an image that's overexposed. You want to explain yourself? When To Catch a Predator continues. They're stalking the chat rooms, then knocking on the door. Welcome back to our latest investigation into computer sex predators. Tonight, we return to Fort Myers, Florida, where we've rented a home when equipped it with 13 hidden cameras. Over the course of three days, two dozen men arrived at the undercover house. Most all the men we met had an excuse and some explaining to do. Here again, Chris Hansen. He's coming around. The men walking through our door range in age from 20 to 61 and come from very different backgrounds. But most of them say almost the same thing when I confront them. So this is the first time you've ever done something like this? Oh, well, yeah. This is All my time. first time. This is my first one. She's the first person I ever considered meeting. I never done this lady. You know, I hear that from virtually every person who has walked into this house. I never have. Never have I met anyone underage. I will swear on my mother's grave, never. And there's something else I hear over and over. Did you bring condoms today? I, I always carry them on me. Did you bring condoms with you? I always carry condoms with me. I have them, yeah. I always carry them. I just carry everywhere with me. There's some in the car. Just happen to be some in the glove box. No, I always have condoms anywhere I go. A person would have to be an idiot not to because of diseases. While most are willing to talk when they don't know they're being recorded on hidden camera. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC and we're doing a story about adults meeting teens on the internet. And just like this man, a mental health counselor for teenagers, when the cameras come out, the potential predators often scurry. I'm not gonna be on TV. You're obviously free to walk right out of the door that you came in. I would like to walk out. I still want my face to be seen. Okay. And he's not the only one. Remember the married man who said his wife would kill him if you? she knew what he was up to? I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. <laughs> if there's anything else you'd like to tell us, we'd like to hear it. I just made a mistake. And I won't do it again. For sure. And then there were the men who had already seen some of our Dateline computer predator investigations. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. Hello. You know. Have you seen the previous stories? You have. And what was your impression of the, of the earlier stories? Nothing. They were very good coverage. Good coverage? They were good coverage. I seen one previous movie uh, a month ago. Okay. And that didn't make you think twice about coming over here to meet a 14-year-old? No. It wasn't coming over to have sex on the site. Or do anything with him. I was just coming to talk to him. And because he's seen a previous broadcast, he remembers what happens next. I'm walk out and do him cop the path there. That's not, that's not up to me. <laughs> no, yes. Okay, thank you. And just as he suspected, the police are waiting to arrest him. Get down. Get down. The ground. Here's another man, Dallas Lee, who saw one of our broadcasts and still showed up. 
He came to meet a boy posing as a 14-year-old. How old is Tony? You ever watch Dateline NBC? Sometimes, yes. I've seen that. You've seen the computer predator stories? Yeah. Well, this is one of them. Oh, lovely. And there's more bad news for him when he gets outside. An officer wearing a type of camouflage to hide in the bushes jumps out and arrests him. Police officer, on the ground! On the ground! As soon as the men leave our house, police work quickly and sometimes aggressively taking the suspects down to the ground. That's because in Florida, it's relatively easy to get a permit to carry a concealed weapon. So these officers aren't taking any chances. Anybody get hurt no. in the takedowns? No, uh, 24 people and no one was injured. All the officers are safe. Let me see your hand. Oh, Lord. As a man is being arrested, an unmarked police vehicle moves into position. The suspect is put into a car and taken to a transfer station. This is the married man, Lee Greer, who hoped his wife would never know that he showed up for a date with a girl who told him she was 13. How's this going to go over at home? I'd really, really, really like for it not to go home. Oh, my God. We got it. We probably have to you're on vacation with him? No, I'm down here working. His picture is taken. Thank you. And when the police search his rental car, they start collecting evidence. He's supposed to bring condoms, booze, and lunch. He's yeah. coming around back. And remember that man, Kenneth Fortin, who online asked a girl claiming to be 15 if he could tie her up? Look what the police find in his car. So there's rope, there's rope. He did admit to me that he had rope in his car, but he denied bringing anything else. Did you bring condoms with you? No. No. Not in your car? No. Did you bring marijuana? No. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Turns out he wasn't telling me the truth. You think any narcotics on you, sir? The police find the marijuana. What do you got going with you? No, but weed. And a box of condoms. Pick it on the ground. Get on the ground. On the ground. On the ground. All of the 24 men who were arrested outside our house were charged with felonies, attempted lewd and lascivious behavior with a minor, and attempting to solicit a child over the Internet. David Schumacher. They all went before a judge, and bail was set. There's probable cause on all the charges. There's a $50,000 bond. Many say they are innocent, but they will have to wait to be arraigned before they can plead not guilty, including the next man you're about to meet. Online, he's very clear about what he wants to do with the underage girl. And what he does when he shows up will be hard for you to believe. You want to explain yourself? Grab that towel right there, please. Wrap it around yourself, and please sit in that stool. It was also hard for officers to believe that strange encounter is coming up next. You're naked. There's a 14-year-old girl. You're chasing a cat around. You've got Cool Whip. The Catch a Predator continues in a moment. What are you driving? So I know I'm look for you. A white pickup truck? Okay, I'll see you soon then, okay? A perverted justice decoy is playing the part of a 14-year-old named Cindy. She's talking to this man, Marvin Lackhan, screen name Crazy Trini 85. They met in an online chat room. Cindy tells him she's a virgin, and he sends her a picture of his genitals. Crazy Trini 85 asks her if she'll try anal sex and adds, it's better than regular sex. Then he asks her if she has a jacuzzi. I'm a you in there. And on your mom's bed? Why not my bed? That too. <laughs> I'm a you in every room, so no matter where you go, you'll remember me. Next, he asks her if she has any pets. Cindy says she has a male cat. And you won't believe what crazy Trini85 asks next. You know what would be a huge turn on for me? What? He wants to watch her perform a sex act on a cat. He says people do it all the time. They discuss it further on the phone, where he tells her they'll need Cool Whip. The decoy says she'll try it if he's willing to strip off all his clothes and walk into her house naked. That's him right there. He's pulling in the driveway. As we told you before, according to law enforcement, asking a suspect to bring or do something specific demonstrates intent. There's like a green thing over the back door. The decoy okay, keeps talking to him as he walks up the driveway. I'm going to find my cat quick, okay? Just strip in there and I'll be out with the cat. 
Alright. He's coming around. Okay, yeah, just like whatever you want. I guess totally naked because that was a deal, right? This is a man who apparently sticks to a deal. He walks in the back door, takes off all his clothes in the laundry room, and goes in search of the decoy. Where are you? Wait, just take a seat. Have a cookie. I made them because they'll go with the cool whip. It was kind of a little surprise. You want to explain yourself? Grab me that towel right there, please. Wrap it around yourself, and please sit in that stool. What are you doing? Making a mistake. Making a mistake. What is going on in your mind? You don't know. Now, what do you think would have happened, Marvin, had I not been here and had there actually been a 14-year-old girl in that next room? What would have happened after you walked in there naked? Something probably would have happened. Something like what? Something along sexual lines. Like you would have had sex with a 14-year-old girl? I'm not sure if I would have done that, but... Marvin, you're naked. Yeah, I wouldn't have gone all the way. I wasn't going... You, you went all the way when you took your clothes off, just about. Then I asked him about the plans he talked about online for the cat. You know what would be a huge <laughs> turn-on for me? What? Watching you blank him, meaning the cat. She says, I don't think I want to blank the cat. Would you, for me, you're going to make this 14-year-old girl perform a sex act on a cat? Was that your plan? It really wasn't. Well, why did you say it then? I was, I was, I was just messing around with it. I wasn't you're just messing serious. around. I really wasn't serious about the cat. You gave her instructions about using Cool Whip. Very specific instructions. I mean, I can only imagine what would have been going on in this house had I not been here. Am I wrong to think that? No, you're not. So what's going to be happening if I'm not here? You're naked, there's a 14-year-old girl, you're chasing a cat around, you've got Cool Whip, and you want this girl to do some sex act with the cat and then you'll have sex with her. Is that accurate? Yes. Then, Crazy Trini 85 asks for some water. Some water? Yes, please. I saw that running around naked got you pretty uh, dried out there, huh? Yeah. Have you ever met any young girls online? First time? Yeah, this is the first time, which will never happen again, I can tell you that. The now. nearly naked man starts laughing. So it's funny. No, this is, I'm just thinking it to myself that this would never happen again. <laughs> this is not something, though. No. It's not right. So you're promising me right now that you'll never... I'm promising myself that I'm not... Hook up with a 14-year-old girl online, tell her to have sex with a cat, and walk into her house naked. Not, not even under 19. <laughs> I'm just... It's, no. I'm promising that to myself, not even to you, just to... This is not good. Now he's about to find out that he just made that promise on national television. Well, there's something else you need to know. I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on adults who try to meet teens online. Yes, sir. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to say about this predicament you're now in, we'd love to hear it. Just trust me, it'll never happen again. And if there's nothing else you have to say, then you're free to walk out that door where you stripped naked and walked in. You can keep the towel. I'll just leave it in the laundry room. That's fine. Once he gets his clothes back on, he walks outside and is arrested by that camouflaged officer. Police on the ground! He's taken to the transfer station and searched. Where do you, like? Where do you live at? In for audio. Well, you're on business or what? No, I'm just being stupid. Just being stupid. Yeah. He's photographed and then taken to jail. This is the person apparently walked into the room naked. The next day, he's brought before a judge and bail is set. That does come out to $50,000, and that's all for today. Thank you, Judge. 
So what's next for these men? Find out when we come back. Chris Hansen joins us. And Chris Hansen joins us now. Chris, these investigations this month have just drawn a huge response, thousands and thousands of emails. And, and one question we're consistently hearing is, why are all of these suspected predators men? Not a single woman. Is there a reason for that? We just haven't seen any women in our investigations. The experts say that there are women predators. They just go after kids they know. They're more comfortable with that. Male predators, like the anonymity and the other accessibility offered by the Internet. You know, we've heard some other viewers uh, say that they think someone in their community may be a, a, a predator, don't know what to do. What can you tell them? Don't try and do a sting operation by yourself. The FBI office locally, the police, sheriff's department, they're all very receptive to this kind of crime, and they'll do something about it. Are there other options, I mean, short of jail? I mean, what about treatment for some of these? Prison these and punishment is critical stone, but the experts tell us that there has to be more treatment options out there for when these guys get out of prison because there's a chance they'll reoffend. And without that, we're really not going to find a solution to this problem. So look at both both potential solutions. There's there. no one-size-fits-all solution to this. There has to be punishment and there has to be treatment. Chris Hansen, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Of course, the reason we've been doing these stories over the past few weeks is to bring home to families the real dangers predators pose on the Internet. As we've mentioned, there are many things parents can do, from monitoring children's Internet use to installing special software on your computer. You'll find a complete online safety kit on our website. The address is dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for now. I'm Stone Phillips. For Ann Curry and all of us at NBC News, thanks for watching.